Let's take a quick look at EMC Ionics Unified Infrastructure Manager, or UIM. UIM is included as vBlocks and is a vBlock element manager, so it manages Cisco and EMC elements all the way up to the vSphere layer. The first thing that it adds is this idea of multi-tenancy. So we've just logged in as a customer, and you'll see that this customer sees the subset of the vBlock, which is their domain. So in this case, uh, certain uh, um, Cisco UCS elements. Now if we were to log out and log in as an administrator, we'll see that the administrator sees multiple customers on that same infrastructure. This idea of multi-tenancy can be important for service providers who are trying to build certain types of vBlock uh, infrastructure. So here you can see that the administrator can navigate looking at all the devices or looking at devices and resources that are assigned to one or more individual customers. Now if you take a look within that family of devices here, you'll notice that there's some UCS elements, there's some MDS elements, there can also be Nexus 5000, 7000 elements, um, uh, and uh, UIM also has the ability to manage that sort of infrastructure end-to-end -end across multiple vBlocks. Let's explore the next part. So if we take a look, uh, UCS Manager delivers a serious uh, set of capabilities. But one thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't have this idea of state, um, previous or prior state. It's a stateless infrastructure. Commonly, what people want is they want the ability to be able to see state with an earlier environment configuration and determine whether it's compliant with that earlier configuration. One common example here, and an example that we're just going to use for the purposes of illustration here, is the running and startup um, configuration for a uh, networking device. So in this case, it could be the MDSs, it could be other uh, Nexus 5000s in the configuration. This tool makes it very simple and easy to compare those running versus startup config files and determine what the differences are. Compare them and then be able to do a state change remediation, which means basically bring it up to the current rev. This is one thing also that gets ex extended here through the use of Unified Infrastructure Manager, which is the idea of being able to apply changes um, on a scheduled basis. So uh, that could include configuring UCS blades, uh, configuring UCS chassis, changing service profiles, changing VLAN, vSAN configurations, or also doing things that UCS Manager itself doesn't do uh, out of the box. For example, the Nexus 5000, 7000, and MDS elements. So for example here, we're going to do this uh, uh, resync um, command, and uh, we're going to do it on uh, immediate approval. And uh, that approval and uh, management process can also be configured to have uh, full-blown auditing style capabilities. So here you can see that the job is now executing, and we're remediating that change that was an error. Now the thing that's notable is if you were using um, UIM to initially configure those uh, elements as opposed to doing it via the CLI or other element GUIs, uh, you would never even run into this problem. Um, so the key thing here is that we're trying to, via UIM, take people out of individual element managers and give them the capability to manage the vBlock as a whole. Returning to the main UIM screen, we can see here that those changes have been remediated and we're no longer out of compliance. Those compliance errors can be all sorts of configuration changes, um, which makes end-to-end -end compliance simple and easy. The next thing that's important is that the uh, UIM tool can uh, extend all the capabilities of the UCS management model to be able to see, for example, and navigate by various uh, simple kind of configuration details. So for example, if you want to see all of this, uh, uh, um, all of the profiles that are uh, service profiles that are contained within a UCS chassis, and then see, for example, within that policy which various configuration options are um, configured and uh, for example whether you have got particular interfaces that are assigned with that uh, service profile um, uh, whether it's VLAN connections whether it's MAC address pools or all those sorts of environments but the other thing that's very important is that customers are going to have multiple V blocks they want to have the ability to query and run reports and do configuration 
across multiple uh, vBlock entities. So for example here, you can see um, uh, policy, um, you know, whether there's, there's a dynamic um, connection policy in a service profile across a broad set of vBlock configurations. Or take a look at uh, logical to compute blade assignments and whether they're in use or not. Be able to take a look at MAC address pools. Uh, normally within the UCS manager you can create and configure uh, MAC address pools, but uh, they're not global attributes. They don't span multiple UCS systems. And you can see, for example, that if you were running an environment with multiple vBlocks, not only would you want a cut and paste policy and service profiles across multiple UCS systems, but you'd want to be able to run reports for compliance and best practices. So as an example here, one thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a particular template or configuration, and we're going to um, uh, apply that across multiple chassis all in one step. So for example, we're taking a MAC address pool. We're taking that MAC address pool, and uh, there's a series of template variables that you can apply. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, configure that MAC address pool and apply it across multiple entities inside uh, this customer's uh, domain. Notice there's tools like compliance, audits, and various other uh, functions in those pulldowns. So if we take a look at this uh, MAC address pool name, uh, we can give it a name, and then we can give it a, a range, and then push that entire configuration across multiple vBlock entities. This idea of being able to do change control and remediation across multiple vBlocks and being able to do it from an end-to-end -end fashion, so the UCS elements as well as the non-UCS elements, so uh, initially other networking elements, but in the future all the end-to-end -end storage attributes as well is the thing that uh, Unified Infrastructure Manager brings to vBlocks. So we're going to now take this uh, uh, configuration and we're going to run it. And you'll notice that we can choose to run it at a scheduled time. So you could imagine that not only would you be able to take the idea of a service profile uh, that you can do within UCS Manager, but you could extend it to uh, uh, entire configuration states and be able to run and add those um, uh, at some fixed basis when you'd like. One thing that VMware is working hand-in-hand -hand with Cisco and with EMC is to take UIM and be able to extend it even further, being able to take entire configuration elements, uh, building ESX clusters and vSphere clusters on demand as needed by higher level applications. Thanks very much. This is EMC Ionics Unified Infrastructure Manager, which is an element manager for VCE vBlocks. Thanks very much and have a great day.